Welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we classified materials in terms of their conductivities. We said solids can be classified into two categories. We have good conductors and poor conductors. The good conductors, we said, they possess both vibration of atoms and free electrons. But for poor conductors, we said they only depend on vibration of atoms. In this lesson, we are going to look at the factors affecting thermal conductivity in solids. And we are going to answer the question, do all good conductors conduct heat at the same rate? My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe how the following factors affect thermal conductivity in solids. One, you describe how nature of material affects thermal conductivity, how thickness of a material affects heat conductivity, how temperature difference affects heat conductivity in solids, and then finally, how length of a material affect thermal conductivity of a material. We are going to start with the first factor that affects thermal conductivity in solids. And the first one is the nature of material. So when we talk about nature of material, we mean what the material is made of. And if you want to investigate how nature of material affects thermal conductivity, then you will take the materials that you want to investigate and then you dip them inside hot water. As you can see on the screen, we have a set of hot water there. And then the materials that we want to investigate, as you can see them, we have wood, we have iron, we have lead, we have copper, then we have aluminium. Then what you do, you make sure these materials that you are introducing or which you are investigating they have the same diameter, then they have equal length, then finally you make sure you use the wax of the same size. So in every material which you have attached to hot water, you make sure you attach wax of equal size in all materials. So what you can see here is wax, so you attach wax of the same size. And then you will wait for some time and observe and what you will see or what you will observe is that the wax which is attached to copper copper will fall off first then it will be followed by the wax which is attached to aluminium At wax attached to aluminium will fall next then it will be followed by the wax attached to iron and then finally it will be followed by the wax attached on lead then what is surprising here the wax which is attached to wood wood will not fall the wax which is attached to wood will not fall so what does this mean what this means is that copper is a best conductor of heat followed by aluminium then followed so copper will be the first one followed by aluminium, the second one. Iron is a better conductor of heat, and then lead will conduct heat the least. This one will be number four. Then it means wood, which wax did not fall, is a poor conductor of heat. So the second factor that affects thermal conductivity in solids is the thickness of a material. When we talk about thickness of a material, we are talking about the diameter. So it is the same thing. And it's the same thing like when you talk about cross-sectional area of a conductor. And in this case, we are going to investigate how the thickness of a material affects thermal conductivity in such a way that if you have a thicker material or a material with a large cross-sectional area, and you have another material with a small cross-sectional area and the two materials are made of the same particles like in this case we have copper which one is going to conduct 
a heat faster. So to investigate this, you will take two rods of the same material. In this case, we have one, the first rod, the second rod. The two rods are made of copper, so same material. But as you can see, the first one has a large cross-sectional area. The other one has a very a, a small cross-sectional area, or the first one is thicker than the second one. And now what you do, you will introduce heat at the center of the two materials and then attach some wax. This is wax at the ends of these materials. Wax, wax. So you attach wax at the ends of those materials and then you introduce this heat at the middle or in between the two materials. However, it's very important to note that when you are setting this experiment, you must ensure that there is equal time of exposure of the rods to heat. So when you are putting them and you want to observe which wax will fall first, you give them equal time. If it is two seconds, both of them must have two seconds. If it is five minutes, you give the two, the two rod five minutes. Then the second thing that you must make sure is that they, they must have equal length. They must have equal length. The two of them must be of equal length. If it is, if the first one is three centimeters, then the second one must also be three centimeters. Then the other thing is that the same size of wax must be used. The wax that you use here must be the same size. Same size. So yeah, it must be same size. You must use wax of the same size. And then finally, the rods must be placed at equal distances from the source of heat. Just that one I've mentioned. So here, if you have the source of heat, the distance here, let's call it X, must be equal to the distance to this second one. It must be the same as X. So what you will observe after some time is that the wax which is attached on the rod which is thick, the wax which is attached to the rod which is thick will uh, fall faster than the one which is attached to a rod which is thin or which has a small a cross sectional area. Now, this means if a rod has a large cross sectional area, heat will be transmitted very fast. And the reason why heat is transmitted very fast in a thicker material, remember when we discussed modes of heat transfer and then we talked about the mechanism of heat conduction we said heat can be conducted only through two mechanisms one vibration of atoms and then we talked about uh, electrons electron movement electron movement and vibration of atoms now if a material is thick it means it has many atoms many atoms and if a material is thick it means it has many electrons so the many electrons in a thicker material and the many atoms in a thicker material which will vibrate and conduct electricity will favor the thicker material than a, a thin material which has few atoms and which have few electrons the third factor that affects thermal conductivity in solids is the temperature difference. Remember what we said when we introduced this topic? We said heat can only travel from one point to another when there's a temperature difference. And we said a material which has high temperature, heat is very high. And then the material which has low temperature, it means it has a smaller heat. So heat will be moving from a material with high temperature to low temperature. And then we move down and say it, if the two materials have the same temperature, then there is no heat transfer within those two materials. Now, if you want to investigate how temperature difference affects thermal conductivity, you will take two beakers, this beaker one and beaker two for setup A, and then you take beaker one and beaker two for setup B. And then for setup A, you put water in the first beaker having a temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. Then the second beaker, you put 
50 degrees Celsius. So if we want to find the temperature difference, temperature difference in the first setup, it will be 90 degrees Celsius subtract 50 degrees Celsius, which is going to give us 40 degrees Celsius. So for the first setup, the temperature difference is 40 degrees Celsius. Then the second setup, you put the first beaker, you put a water of temperature 90 degrees Celsius. Then the second beaker, you put a water of temperature 20 degrees Celsius. Then now, the temperature difference in the second setup will be, temperature difference is equals to 90 degrees Celsius, subtract 20 degrees Celsius. That is the temperature difference, which will give us a 60 degree Celsius, not 60, but rather 70 degrees Celsius, 70 degrees Celsius. Now, as you can see, the first setup, the temperature difference is 40, which is lower, and then the second setup, the temperature is 70, which is much, much higher. And then when you are setting this uh, uh, experiment, you make sure that the rods are of equal diameter, the two rods that you are using must be of equal diameter, then the rods must have equal length, then the wax which you use must be of the same size, then wax placed at equal distance from each end of the rod in each case, and then finally the rods of the same material. If you use iron, you use iron. If you use copper, you use copper for the two cases. Now, what you will observe in setup B, this is setup B down here, the second one here where we have a temperature difference of 70, the wax will fall off first than setup A, setup B, A where we have a temperature difference of 40. Now the reason why uh, wax in setup B falls off first is because there is a greater temperature difference, so it means heat will move very fast through this conductor, to the, to the beaker where you have a lower temperature. But in the first case here, where the temperature difference is uh, 40, it means heat will move slowly through this conductor. That's why in setup B, the wax falls off first, then setup A, the wax falls off later. So this means heat transfer is faster when the temperature difference is greater. Then finally, the fourth factor affecting thermal conductivity in materials is the length of the conductor or the length of the material. So in this case, if you want to investigate how length of a conductor affects thermal conductivity, you set up your apparatus as you can see on the screen. We have rod A. This is the rod, the first rod, the first one here. Let's call it A. And then we have rod B then what you make sure when you are setting this one is that the rods are placed equal distance from the source of heat. You place these rods equal distance from the source of heat. So if this one to the heat is X distance, the other one should also be X distance. Then the second thing that you make sure is that the rods must be of the same material. If this is copper, then the other one must also be copper, same material then wax of the same size must be used. So this wax which you use here, this wax must be of the same size, and then the rods of the same thickness must be used. So in this case, the, rod, the thickness of this rod must be the same as the thickness of the other rod. So the only thing that you vary here is the length of the material. Like in this case, if you use the first rod to be five centimeters, five centimeters long, then the other one you can use three centimeters long. And now what you will observe is that the wax on rod B, rod B which has a small, so the one with a small length will fall off first, fall off first, then the, then the one with a long length fall off later, fall off later. Now, what happens? Why does the one with a small length fall off first? 
and then the one with a smaller length or with a larger length for of later what we are going to realize is that when heat is traveling within a material it travels in what we call a lines of heat flow it travel in imaginary lines which we call lines of heat flow and we are going to discuss them later it means if you introduce heat here it will be moving in such a way that it diverges outwards these lines will be diverging outwards as heat is traveling from the source to the other end now as you can see the heat will be lost to the surface of the material but if you have a smaller material they move once then the second time it has reached the other end but in the first one it has to move in a very series of those divergency and then when it, the heat will be reaching at the far end of this longer material most of the heat would have been lost to the environment so in this case it means when there is a large length heat conductivity is slow and when there is a small length heat, heat conductivity is very fast provided that the nature of the material is the same and they have the same thickness same size of wax is used and then they are placed at the equal length from the source of heat so that marks the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss how we are going to limit the heat which will be lost by a conductor through the lines of heat flow by a process called lagging